Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Kimberly Weefling on the line, and she's a founding member of, and global consultant over at Silicon Valley Alliances. Uh, Kimberly, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. So definitely excited to get into what we're, uh, our show topic today, so the global epidemic of disengaged employees and what's this, what this is costing uh, organizations in terms of revenue. Um, but before we get into that, let's get a little bit further into Silicon Valley Alliances. So, so tell us a little bit more about the story of why you founded this. Well, I've been an independent consultant since 2001 when the dot-com bust happened, and I've been working with a bunch of really stellar global people for the last 10, 15 years, and we just said, hey, why don't we band together and make a website together and continue our work under that umbrella. So we have people here in the U.S. in Silicon Valley. We have people in Europe, including Slovenia, Bulgaria, and also in Japan, Tokyo, and in Australia, and we all know each other, trust each other, and we get work together on amazing work, shock therapy, learning labs that uh, don't suck your will to live. Man, I love that. What, what a great story. I love that when you said we all, we all banded together. And I find this happening more and more, and I think that the clients really benefit. I mean, it's just so good to be able to have uh, to have these um, complementary skill sets um, working for clients. I love it. Uh, so let's um, – I do want to get in – let's switch up a bit. Let's get into your findings and what you found on this global epidemic of disengaged employees. So where do you want to start with that? Well, I'll just tell you, I've been following the research from Gallup for decades, and nothing has really changed. It, it sucks. Being an employee means you go to work for a job that, eh, you're less than excited about and get a salary so you can pay your bills. That's no way to spend your life. Gallup has researched for decades the stats on this, and, uh, you know, I work mostly in Japanese companies, and in Japan, it's only 6% of employees who come to work really jazzed about their work. The U.S., the so-called best country in the world for employee engagement, has only a thir- pathetic 35% of employees engaged. That means two-thirds of people come to work just to get a salary. I call those people wage slaves. And you can better believe that those people are not as productive or enthusiastic or creative as people who really care. Why do you find this is this epidemic is happening? So what are some of the things, I mean, you're, you're an expert in this space. What are some of those things that you can, I know it's going to change, by the way, from organization to organization, but as long as you've been working on this, I mean, I know certain themes arise. What do you find are some of the things that employers can do to make employees like coming to work? Well, I have good news for you. Gallup just published a great book last year with the title, Giving Away the Punchline. And the title of the book is, It's the manager. Uh, The quality of managers and team leaders is the single biggest factor in a person's engagement. And actually, it's also the number one reason why people quit their jobs. They quit managers. They join companies and quit managers. Interesting, and that makes sense because now that you uh, now that you say that, I bet you everybody listening is like, wait a minute, like I, if you've ever, I don't know, I've never, I've never had that happen, but I know what, like with friends and stuff, I'm like, when when you think about what they like or don't like, it's usually people saying, no, I like the work, I just don't like my manager, I don't like the, uh, I don't like, I don't like what's, uh, you know, the way I'm treated or these other things, and some people even like the culture, and it's just like the, they don't like that part. So that, so how does somebody get over that? I mean, you can't like, you can't fire all the managers. Somebody has to run the company. I mean, what do they do? Oh, I have a simple solution. Less managing, more leadership. Uh, Lead people, manage cows. I ask people all over the world, hey, who likes to be managed? Nobody. Manage budget, manage spreadsheet, manage things, but don't try to manage people. Lead people, and it's been known, by the way, for at least 20 years how to have people willingly follow you by simple, five simple areas of behaviors that anybody can adopt regardless of position or title. Let's uh, let's get a little bit into your book. So I noticed you have quite a few books. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. Well, I wrote 2007, I wrote Scrappy Project Management because I couldn't believe that all these projects I was working on, at the end when we have the post-project review, you know, those so-called lessons learned, they're always the same. So I said, why do we have to learn the same thing? So I wrote a book that said, hey, let's do it different this time. Let's fail for new and more exciting reasons. And uh, that has got me invited all over the world. Tell us a little bit more about your work in Japan. 
oh my gosh, I started working with Japanese here in Silicon Valley when they came over to visit, and I gave them A++ service, even though they were paying, you know, university rates, because I was working through the University of California, Santa Cruz at that time, and they said, oh my gosh, Kimberly, Japan needs you, so I'm like, give me a ticket. So I went to Japan <laughs> over, <laughs> I've been over a hundred times, I went every month for like about 10 years, for two, three, four weeks. Wow. It was crazy. I mean, I don't speak Japanese. I don't understand Japanese. But for some reason, the Japanese just love my style. I think because I'm kind of like an Osaka comedian. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't even deal with it, Kimberly. <laughs> I oh, was not on, expecting Adam. that. I, wasn't even, I know why. I would want to take leadership training from you because I'm smiling right now. And any time oh, I've ever done right. leadership training, I probably wasn't smiling in the past. And by, by the way, I don't do training because training doesn't work except for circus animals. I create mm. workshop therapy kind of learning laboratory where people's best, highest, best version of themselves can emerge. And we do it all in, in alignment with adult learning principles, proven to work way better than lecture or any other method. You know, get in there and do some experiments. If you want to lose weight, you don't read a book about exercise. You go to the gym and work out. And so we, we do the leadership gym. Mm, I love it. So le- leadership gym. So what kind of so a lot lot of lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of executives listening. Um, what kind of companies do you uh, do you are usually a good fit or niche for you if they're listening, so that they know if they're the right type of company to follow up with you? Well, for me personally, I'm a physicist by education, so I tend to make a really good match with people who are highly technical and they're they're really struggling. It's like, geez, we're so smart, we have great technology, but we just can't get stuff done, and we're mm-hmm. failing for all these so-called touchy-feely crap reasons, you know, human skills. And so if they want to work with me, I can get the technology side and say, hey, look, technology is not a problem. Let's go to the dark side. Let's imagine that somehow human beings need to connect, build trust and relationships, communicate, and work together to achieve what no individual can achieve alone. I love it. That's awesome. And so, uh, so Kimberly, if somebody is listening to this and they do want to follow up to learn more about your work or to connect with, um, with the Silicon Valley Alliance, uh, Alliances, um, what's the best route for them to do that or to connect? Well, it's easy to reach me, my first name at mylastname.com, Kimberly at weakling.com, spelled not like it sounds, or go to SiliconValleyAlliances.com website, or just call the police. They'll know where I am. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I, I, got it, I got it on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that I think that's a great way to end it. Uh, no, <laughs> but seriously, no, seriously, it's been awesome having you on the show. Um, great stuff there. Love learning more about your book. Um, also, what you're doing um, in your work, not just Japan but worldwide. So great stuff there. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you had a lot of fun listening to this. If you did, don't forget subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave us a review on the Apple iTunes Store. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, um, Mission Matters Business. Don't don't forget to uh, give us a subscribe there, but also leave some comments on the video. I'd love to continue the conversation over at the YouTube community. Don't let, don't let it end here. And uh, Kimberly, thanks again for coming on the show.